Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY. On today's episode, I'm gonna show you guys how to jack your car up and get underneath and start working on it. So, stay tuned. Well folks, like I said, this is gonna be a quick little episode, just kind of like a, like a 101, like pretty easy stuff. If you wanna get underneath your car and start working on it, you inevitably have to jack your car up. But on these old minis, there's not really like a specific jack point that the factory built into the actual mini's body. So where do you jack it up from? Well, on this episode, I'm gonna answer that question. But before we do, don't forget there is a cylinder head giveaway going on until Christmas. That is only a few days away now. There are daily entries as well as the primary ones that ask you to subscribe to the channel, things like that. So the link to that is in the description. Again, it only goes until December 25th. And then I'll be doing a premiere episode where I announce the winner and I do a little shop tour like you guys asked for on Instagram. So best of luck to everyone. But let's head out to the car and get this thing jacked up. Now with the Classic Mini, it's a bit unusual when compared to more modern cars where like say my Tacoma, it has fixed points that were set by the factory for where you should jack the car up. These generally are delimited by a small little arrow, something like that on the body frame. Well, the Mini doesn't have those. And I don't know if the British mechanics were just like, you know what, this car is so good that it's just never gonna have to get up on the jacks. I think we all know that that was not the case. And they didn't really build any specifically into the body of the car. So there are two main sections of the car that you're gonna wanna jack it from, either from the front subframe, so where all of your wheels and your engine attach to, or from the back subframe, which is where all of your wheels and suspension attach to on the back. But it's not quite that easy. It's not just like anywhere on the subframe is gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jack this car up and I'll give you guys an underside look at this car so you have an idea of where, where exactly I'm talking about. So first things first, let's get our hydraulic jack. Now, this is the best jack that I have ever owned. It's a super high lift jack. I'll put a link to it in the description. I am only saying that because I am just over the moon with it. It lifts the car up really, really high. It's strong and, uh, and it makes working on the underside of the car very easy. Now at this point, we're looking at the underside of the front of the car here. So the first place that I like to jack it up from is the connection of the front tie rods to the front of the subframe. That's probably the most frequent place I jack it up from and I've been doing it there for years and years now, basically the whole time I've owned the Mini. That's my favorite place to lift the car from because it's the easiest to get to. Followed closely behind the bottom portion of your subframe near where the control arms are connecting up. Now that part has a little bit more soft pliable metal. As you can see, mine's already kind of like wavy in there. And generally speaking, I don't lift the car up from there just because I feel like it has a tendency to warp. That could be totally unfounded. But most of the time when the car is being lifted by like say a full on car hydraulic lift in a shop, that's gonna be the location that they lift it from. Um, it's the easiest place to get those arms into. And then you should see my two jack stands are sitting at the back wings of the subframe. That's always where I put my jack stands. That has been the most successful place for me to put those. Um, you can set the car down onto it and it keeps it nice and stable. One thing you absolutely must do when you're working on your car is always, always, if you're underneath it, use jack stands. And these jack stands are not expensive. You can get a pair of them for like 15 bucks on Amazon. I'll put the link to these in the description as well. These will absolutely save your life. Now, one thing I'm not doing to show you guys this a little bit easier is keeping my jack there as well. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, as you can see, I've moved my jack back to one of the mounting points I just mentioned. And what I do here, this is kind of a safety thing. So there's effectively three points of failure on this car um, when it's up in the air like this. So you have your two rear jack stand mounts and then I'll often leave my lift, my jack itself, underneath the first mounting point, not with a full tension underneath it, but tightened and just up there and touching it. And what that does is it provides three points of safety. That way, if any one fails, you have enough time to get out from underneath the car before you know a second or a third one would fail. 
So that's the front side of the car. Let's go ahead and let it back down and then we'll move back to the rear subframe and I'll show you the points that I lift it from there. Now, just like with the front of the car, you are jacking from a subframe instead of the body of the car. And you can see here, I've got my jack still in place. And if you look closely all the way up at the front of the car, you can see that I do have the wheels chalked with a piece of wood. That is extremely important, especially when you're jacking up the rear of the car. Whereas the front of the car, you can put your parking brake on, although you should still chalk the wheels to make sure your car doesn't roll. Th what this is gonna do is it's gonna keep the car from rolling away while you're jacking it up or you're setting it down on jack stand. So on the back subframe, there's a few good places where you can jack this up. My two favorite places are right at the very front of the subframe in the corners, here and here, and along the back flat portions that extend towards the back of the car. When jacking up the car, you absolutely do not want to jack it up from the middle of the rear subframe, that spot right here. If you do jack it from there, that is almost definitely going to bend, and it's also gonna cause problems in the event that you ever have to take your subframe out in the future. So just avoid jacking it up from there, and you should be in good shape. Now let's drop this back down, and head back into the shop and wrap this up. Now, that pretty much wraps up the episode. Um, sorry it took me so long to make this video. I have had tons of people ask me about this and I just kept forgetting to make it. I hope this helps. I hope it kind of takes away the nebulous nature of where you should be jacking up your classic mini. If you have any questions about what I did in this video, obviously post them in the comment section below. I'm always here to help if I can. One thing that I do want to mention is if you were following my Bad Wolf mini build at all, which I'll pop up in the corner here, I did have the car up on four jack stands using two by fours to extend the length of the car. Now, that is a little bit different than jacking up your car for regular maintenance. The reason I did that is because I was actually dropping the front and rear subframes, or at least I had the intention to. So instead of resting all the weight of the body onto a small central point on one of those jack stands, the two by four extended between two jack stands helped distribute the weight of the body itself onto those two jack stands to avoid any sort of bending or warping. So I could still remove the subframe of the car while having it lifted and up off of the ground safely. Um, Cause obviously the jack stands normally need to sit underneath your rear subframe or your front subframe. So if any of that was confusing when I did it before, hopefully that kind of explains it. Otherwise, I know I've said this a couple times, but this is definitely gonna be the last video before Christmas. So Christmas is on the Tuesday of next week and uh, sometime maybe Wednesday or Thursday, I'll film my workshop tour and I'll film the announcement of the winner of the big cylinder head contest. Um, and those will, that'll be one video. It'll be a premiere episode. So I'll be live in the chat answering any questions you have up until we make the announcement at the end of that episode. So that should be a lot of fun, but thanks so much for watching everybody. And thanks for all of the support you've given throughout the year. It's been wonderful and I can't wait for 2019. So until the next episode, enjoy those minis and motor on.